all good. Whew. Hello everyone, Josh here, and I welcome you again to See Your Way. And today's video is about making the most out of life. While we are alive as human beings, we need to embrace in the fullest means everything that's going on around us and not waste not waste our time doing things that are meaningless finding our true purpose and finding the things that matter the most that bring brings the best out of us into the world that's the things we should be focusing on but human beings tend to be very inefficient and less optimized to go about that process of focusing on goals and you know just basically being in the space the mental framework that they need to be to do great things and contribute to society so i'm gonna talk about some points on that you'll hear about it shortly to be the person that makes the most out of their life they have to reschedule and reframe how they go about doing things in their life so there are eight simple things that i would say that you could do and i'll get into that right now okay so the first thing is to become a morning person a person who shifts to most of their need to do tasks as, as i like to call them they need to do tasks as early as possible into the day so when you are burdened with things that uh you're just doing it in this just as a necessity to survive like let's say a job it may not be completely aligned with your truest goals but if you could use the earlier parts of your day to you know work on your fitness um read a book to you know, open your mind to greater forms of education or philosophies. Um, meditating just to kind of prime your mind so that you, you change your behavior for the rest of the day. You want to become a morning person so that you shift that, those need-to-do tasks earlier in the day so that when the rest of life happens, which anything could happen, you could get in a car accident, earthquake could happen people could um change up the the you know the the order of the day and it could disrupt the flow of when you would might have planned to do other things later in the evening so it just makes sense to do things beforehand before the day gets started a lot of um well-known um entrepreneurs and and you know owners of big business they they schedule some of the most of their need to do tasks early in the morning before the sun comes up now i know a lot of people don't want to get up at 4 30 in the morning or even five to do anything um but i would say just make just giving yourself maybe an hour from what your normal waking time is just one hour before will allow you to do the things i just said okay so the second thing is is to get better at something but only by one percent so let's just say from now until next year, whatever day you watch this and you worked on something and let's say you only got better at it by 1%. By this time next year, technically, if you worked on it every day, you should be getting better at it at 365%. Or if it's a leap year, 366%. Um, so the, the concept is, is that if you... Just chip away a little bit by a little bit by a little bit. But consistent 100% effort towards this one thing every day. You know, before you know it, you'll be like, hey, why am I so good at drawing? Or I'm very good at push-ups or, you know, speaking a second language. Frame it in your mind that you're just doing a little bit. You're not even trying to say, I want to get 20% better in the next two weeks. No, I just want to get better 1% a day. It just helps you with the process and carries you along the journey a lot easier. And it feels a lot less stressful to do that 
because you're always living in the moment right now. You're not living in the future. You might have the mind of what your future self would want to be. So just working with it a little bit every day for specific skill-based tasks, I will say, is why you would do that 1% um, practice. So the third thing is to be vulnerable. And when I say be vulnerable, I mean opening up some of your weaknesses to people that you trust so that they could relate or empathize with you to give you the kind of assistance that you need. I know especially for men, we tend to not want to open up our backs or open up our sides of ourselves because there are wicked people in the world and they will exploit your weaknesses and take advantage of you and just bring down the downfall of your personal empire. But for the most part, if you have a trusted group of friends or you have people that you realize have the same kind of narrative or a similar kind of, um, what is what I'm looking for? Ah, they have like a similar way of speaking about certain things. They have vocabulary. Wow. The words miss me all the time. But yeah, so when you realize some people have a similar vocabulary, sometimes it might be good to just open up just a little bit to just get a feel off of where they're at. And they might have had some insight that you may not be open to. And with that kind of diversity of perspectives, it, call, it, it causes things to merge together. And then this is where the kind of innovation happens and you get these opportunities to be better at whatever you have to do. So be vulnerable, but be safe. So the fourth thing is, don't study it, whatever it is. I like this statement, be indifferent to the things that make no difference. That's what I mean by don't study it. Pay attention to the things that are urgent and need to be addressed as quickly as possible and don't procrastinate and leave that to just build up over time. I'm talking about the things that when you really think about, you know, someone's opinion of you, uh, especially if it isn't true, um, technology, apps, you know, physical items, if these things do not actively contribute to your growth as a human being, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Don't go and deal with that. Just don't study it. That's the best thing you could do, honestly. Okay, so the next thing is stop believing in things when you're not even believing in yourself. I actually saw that on someone's Instagram story. I can't remember who. And they had like a they had like a line. Um it said, you know, people out here believing in ghosts, but they don't believe in themselves. Like, they're not making that is like the most ludicrous thing you could do. Just just stop f focusing on you know, things that I, I, I don't want to say like, you, you know, you don't want to be um, spiritual learning, but don't be unnecessarily superstitious. You know, things badly happening or and you have like low self-esteem for yourself. That, that is just like a logical thing to do. You have unproven, untested perspectives. And you want to put your faith in it because of some other overarching concept. To me, that doesn't make any sense. If you disagree, leave a comment below and we could chat about it. But for me, it's it seems more pragmatic to just put more faith in what you can do and what's within your control because you can see the physical impact of the things that are around you than some unseen force impacting your life in a in a really devastating way and the i, li I like to talk about with, with my friends the concept of the locus of control and in psychology what it says is that people are split between a lot of people are split between where they they put focus and emphasis on what impacts their life and what contributes or they give power to contribute into the impact of their life. And for, for people who tend to get ahead in life, most of it is leaned on, on their personal actions that they go through. They take strength 
and they take wisdom from things that are, you know, not tangible and, you know, you can't see in the world, but they put a lot of emphasis on what they can do in their life. And it's to remove that kind of victim mindset that, you know, everything is against you when you have a lot of power in seeing how something in, um, interacts with you and how, and how badly it affects you. You have that control over how that impacts you. Okay, so the final thing is to start with the end in mind. Um, starting with the end in mind allows you to draw a proper picture and work your way backwards. So in with whatever your goal is going through life, even if it's a simple task, see what it is that you want to accomplish in your life and then kind of work back simple steps that come to that realization. So if you have to bake a cake, um, visualize the cake that you're going to finish, have coming out of the oven, but re start to relate all these steps in reverse that would lead from one thing into the other before you get to where the cake is. Um, it could be any other project or task that you have to complete. And what it also does, it helps you start to itemize and prioritize, pr prioritize, prioritize, yeah. Prioritize what things need to be done so that you're not caught up in a bunch of other fluff. And it's like, because in the process of just going through the journey, people, we, we, tend, we tend to get distracted a lot. We tend to kind of veer off and, you know, other things become priority because it looks interesting and it's because we are always interested in doing fun and engaging things but they don't con they don't keep us on the path that we really want inside and it tends to be a, a an alternative form of like procrastination in some way so yeah start with the end in mind and think about it like one year from now this is where I want to be. So that brings us to the end of this video. And I know I did, I think I did see, um, I was going to say eight points, but it really was six and I forgot and I ain't go beat up. But that don't mean you cast still like, share and subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends or anything. Um, we make mistakes all the time and making the most out of life is to just roll with the punches sometimes and just keep going with the flow stop being in the grind and start to flow instead so yeah thanks for watching and i will talk to you in the next one peace